theaters, even those that have been able to reopen at reduced capacity, have struggled to convince moviegoers to return to the cinema when more and more first-run films are being released simultaneously, or nearly so, on streaming services. It's a transition that the pandemic has only accelerated, and it's the subject of this month's The Bigger Picture. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Captain Jefferson Kyle Kidd, and I'm here tonight to move the news from across this great world of ours. The way I fly, they will never find us. I forgot to tell you. What? Later. Will they, will they shoot at us? What's your name, honey? Uh, I'm Joe. I teach middle school band. Howdy, go for it. Okay, hi, I'm Charles Dove. I'm the director of Rice Cinema, and I'm also the head of uh, the Rice Film Program here at Rice University. I run this uh, cinema that I'm sitting in right now. Hi, uh, Michael Bergeron. I currently write for Test Set. Hi, I'm Joe Layton. I am an adjunct professor at the School of Communications at the University of Houston, and I'm a film critic for Variety and a senior writer for Cowboys and Indians magazine. And I'm Joshua Zinn, producer for Houston Matters. So we're talking about the future of film-going experiences and the, and the future of movie theaters. First off, you know, when we started with the pandemic, obviously theaters initially had to close, and then films were getting delayed releases and being pushed into the next year. And then more recently, we saw the announcement from Warner Brothers. Well, first they, they first announced that they were going to release uh, Wonder Woman uh, 1984 on HBO Max as well as in theaters simultaneously. And then shortly after that, they announced they're going to do that for their entire slate of films for the next year, for 2021. And then kind of coupled in with this, we, we got some announcements from Disney Plus recently about some of their new shows, as well as some of the new films that they're going to also release on Disney Plus. So I guess the bottom line is we're, we're getting a lot of new, quote-unquote, theatrical releases that are being released on demand on, on these streaming services. And so a lot of people are talking about uh, what does this mean for the theater industry? And, and theater, uh, certain theater companies have, have come out, AMC and Cinemark have sort of talked about the WB uh, deal, and, and AMC especially has been particularly critical of it. And, and so th there's a lot to unpack here. Charles, let's start with you. What is sort of behind the situation, and what, what is behind the, the criticism that, that some of these theaters have put against this, this plan by Warner Brothers? Right, I think the theaters, the theater companies, the ones that own the theaters, are, are in a situation where they're going, they're really on a, a verge of sort of problems, bankruptcy, liquidation, etc., right, because of this long period of, of very low attendance if, or just strip, strictly closure. Um, that's on one side of it. I think that's why they're responding, why NATO, right, the National Association of Theater Owners, which is called NATO, has been so uh, fervent about this. On the other side, you have... Uh, Warner Brothers um, being one of the major figures behind HBO Max, and HBO Max is coming out in the time of sort of, of high, like Wild West confusion about streaming, right? So they're gonna they're gonna try they're trying to sort of maximize people being drawn to HBO Max by having those films begin there, right? And then also still be in theaters, right? So that's it's sort of a there's sort of two pronged thing going on here because the theaters and the the movie production companies are not the same companies, right? They have different interests in this. So that, that, that's my sense of it anyway, is that, uh, you know, it could very easily be that some of these companies are going to go out of business in the next 18 months. Well, Warner Brothers has already backtracked. They've pulled yeah. uh, the uh, Sopranos prequel from the release schedule, and I can pretty much expect them to pull Dune. Especially after Dennis, Denny Villeneuve really complained fervently about the situation where, you know, that film was clearly being made to be seen in a movie theater, in a large sort of multiplex style movie theater. I think we're right in the middle of everything and there's an awful, awful lot of un uncertainty and I think people are tending to think very apocalyptically. I also think uh, Wonder Woman is kind of a sacrificial goat. Let's see how this goes. What was in the news this week? Uh, Gal Gadot eating Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you're going to have somebody eating a taco why taco bell well it's it's crass commercialism and, and let's face it these superhero movies are kind of the junk food of movie going and warner brothers has not really caught up to the the plateau that disney and marvel are at yeah well i remember a few years back i was talking with a fairly well-known film critic about the future theatrical releases 
And he was of the opinion, and I was of the opinion, that uh, pretty soon uh, only the blockbusters, only the you know, spectacles would be playing in movie theaters, whereas the small-scale, adult-oriented, uh, character-driven dramas would be uh, on cable. Well, this conversation happened in uh, about 1982. <laughs> uh, I was talking with Roger Ebert at the time uh, at a film festival in Dallas. And it seems like every few years there is a new apocalypse. You know, first it was cable, then it was home video, then it was streaming. And theaters are going to go the way of the go-go or whatever. And uh, I think there will always be uh, an audience for movie theaters. I think there will always be people who will go to movie theaters. On the other hand, uh, I can remember just about two or three months into this current you know, pandemic, and someone asked me, are movie theaters going to reopen? I said, uh, are movie theaters going to reopen? Yes. Are all movie theaters going to reopen? No. It's just a, it's a, yeah, I think that, I think Joe's right about that, that there's going to be some culling of some movie theaters. I mean, I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's a situation where organizations like Disney or Netflix buy movie theaters, you know, straight up buy them because they'll be for sale. And that might be a way of sort of uh, emphasizing their releases, right? One of the problems that streaming has is that there's no centralized way of sort of promoting their, their releases without theaters. Theaters are really exist to promote the, the further consumption of movies down the line, right? They don't make their profits really from the movie theaters. Although this year has not been as bad as you think, right? It's been great in China, for instance. There's been some enormously successful films in China. Uh, uh, Tenet, Tenet is the, it made, what, $360 million in a, in a global pandemic in movie theaters, right? It's not, it's not that it hasn't been successful, it just hasn't been as successful as it would normally be. But really, they would be reaping the profits now when it's being released on streaming and being released on Blu-ray and so forth. You know, it's. I think it's just a situation where uh, the comparison I always use is to polio. It's not like they, they, there are no public swimming pools, right? People swim all the time in public swimming pools now, even though polio scared people away from them for a long period of time. And I don't think that's going to be forever. I think, but there will be some some pain. I think that you know, especially on the part of the theater owners, not so much the, the, the smaller theaters like the kind of place I run, but the bigger, like the you know the Regals and, and so forth, that are really obviously feeling the pain right now. Well, also, and I'm certainly not the first person to point this out, but after you know the the pandemic of, of 1918, 1919, we saw the Roaring Twenties. A lot of that was driven by the fact that. People that had not been able to go out, had not been able to have good times, had, you know, to you know, stay away from this place and that place. I think once the, you know, vaccines are out there and let people take them, uh, I think in the next two or three years, you're going to see an enormous boom in movie theater attendance. Like, I think there's going to be an enormous boom in live theater and live concert attendance. I mean, people are getting this pent up, yeah, I can see this at home. Uh, I can eat at home. But once things get better, I'm going to go out to a damn restaurant. <laughs> I, I can drink at home, but when this is open, you know, when this is all over with, I'm going to go to the bar, and I'm probably going to close down the bar. Right. So, Charles, you, you referenced something something interesting that I, that I wanted to touch on, talking about, uh, you were referring specifically to Denis Villeneuve and his uh, concerns about Dune. You know, you said Dune is a movie that is made for the theater. You know, streaming is relatively new, at least on the level that it's at right now. But, but you know, we've had for a while a lot of original releases that have been made for streaming, have been released specifically on those platforms, Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max, whichever. Um, and I'm wondering on the on the creative side of things and in the way that films are made. I mean, what what does this say about the future of that? Will we see more films be made with that in mind, or do you think you know are there enough of those old school directors like Scorsese who are very much cinemaphiles who, right. who will who will continue to make films for the theater specifically? Yeah, I think well, you know, Scorsese's very elderly, right? Spielberg is very elderly. They're, they've delayed his West Side Story film that was supposed to come out this time, Christmas time. Um, 
you know, I think there was a huge debate about uh, Scorsese's last film when it appeared in, on, uh, was it Netflix, right? Netflix, and that it's, you know, it also played in the theaters, and, and there's a, there's a, just prior to the pandemic, there was a giant fight, right, within the film world between uh, allowing films that have premiered on streaming services to be nominated for awards and, and play at Cannes, and Cannes in particular was very resistant to the idea of having Netflix and other, other sort of sources for films uh, be allowed to present there. And it's sort of what's happened is it's fed into that. That debate has been sort of amplified by the, you know, apocalyptic nature of the pandemic, I think. And it's, so it's really, uh, it's become even worse. But I think, that, you know, I, somebody like uh, Christopher Nolan is 51, I think. He's like a generation younger than and Scorsese. He's going to keep making films like that. He shoots them on film. In Tenet, he actually bought and crashed a real 747. That level of expense in those films is really going to be really hard to uh, be recouped in a television or a streaming context. And you can see that as sort of at work in their thinking and why they're so upset. Why they, why they tried so hard to get people to go see that film in the, in, when it did play in the multiplexes in the fall. Uh, because it's, you know, it's a, that, that level of spectacle it can't be easily reproduced in a smaller context. And so that, that, I think we're going to have uh, what's left of the major studios and the major theater chains will renegotiate uh, the the shares yeah. that they command for uh, their their engagements. And also, like Charles said, you're going to have uh, major players like Netflix or Amazon or Disney buy their own theaters where you'll go and it won't be a 24 plex. Maybe it'll be a 12 plex. And there'll be all Disney films playing, and there'll be a playroom with Disney characters for the kids. Yeah, that sort of thing. That's really, they and should be working for that. There'll be a venue you can buy Disney films. And, and statistically, uh, people don't go to the movies. The average person does yeah. not go to the movies That's true. more than five times a year. Uh, a, a true movie buff will probably go every week. It's the rare person who's there more than once a week. And that's not really... Uh, the films that they're turning out, uh, it's spoiling people. Why go back to a theater when you can just sit on your couch and watch it? But on the other hand, there have been some films that have been released in theaters during the shutdown. And I have been pleasantly surprised by uh, the box office response they've had. I mean, they're not blockbusters. But uh, Let Him Go, which is a very fine film with uh, Kevin Costner and Diane Leigh. It, by the way, was chosen as one of uh, Barack Obama's favorite movies of the year. And it did open in some theaters. And it was, you know, better received and made more money than a lot of the horror films and, and genre films that have been released in theaters. And this was definitely a movie aimed at an older audience. So even, you know, old fogies like myself may have this pent-up desire to go see a movie. And they'll, you know, they go see Kevin Costner and Diane Lane in a, in a very suspenseful movie. And I envy them because I had to see it as, as a streaming video before I, I interviewed the two stars. And I, I swear, the whole time I'm watching this, I kept thinking, man, I'd love to see this in a theater. I would love to see how the audience would respond to this scene or that scene. And, you know, I probably will have to wait until, you know, Alamo Draft House brings it back when, when things are sane again. But uh, I'm looking forward to that. So, Joe, you've talked about this, and I think you've kind of made the point that uh, maybe maybe it's a bit like Chicken Little, maybe maybe a bit of sky is falling, uh, hysteria over something that, that just has patterns like this. But, but I guess, one, is it too early to tell, and two, is it maybe much ado about nothing with, with people who are worried about the death of movie theaters? Well, if a, if a new medium, a new way of entertaining people, or a new way of accessing this material uh, would replace and, you know, get rid of what's done before, you know, if that was already the case, there would be no live theaters. There would be, uh, no one would be going to football games because they can watch football games on TV. You know, no one would be going to the opera because uh, they watch opera on, on cable or streaming or DVDs or Blu-rays. I mean, there is always going to be, I think, the idea of seeing something with an audience 
appreciating something with an audience. It's interesting that you bring up opera because there, there's truly a divide in how people view opera and theater, legit stage theater, as opposed to movies. In movies, if your cell phone goes off, nobody really cares. They don't really care what sounds you're making when you're eating, uh, unwrapping hard candies or, or eating, you know, a meal. Um, and if you if you do that in a, in a theater, like the Alley Theater, if you get up to go to the bathroom, you don't come back in. They're not going to let you in until the act is open. And uh, in, in fact, the Alley Theater has just announced that they're going to do online performances for the first half of their 2021 season. And it's just like, it, it's, it destroys the whole sanctuary of the theater. Talk about breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> Let's all go to the line.